Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 17 of the platform specific series of my 6502 assembly programming tutorials. We're going to move on now, and we're going to start looking at how we can set colors on the systems. Of course, we already know how to do bitmap graphics, but unless we set the palette for the systems, we won't know what colors our pixels are going to come out in. Now, of course, the systems we're looking at in these tutorials have widely different functionality. So what we're going to be doing in these tutorials is we're going to use a common format that's actually based on the uh, CPC plus format, which used one nibble per channel. So we use four bits per green, then four bits for red, and then four bits for blue, and four bits are unused altogether. So we're going to define our colors using that format, and then we're going to convert that format to whatever our actual system uses. And this makes developing our multi-platform games a lot easier because we can select our ideal color in a red, green, blue format, and our code will then convert that to whatever our system actually has. That way we have one palette that we use on our 10 systems, or however many systems we've got, and the code just does it all for us. And it made making Grime 6502 and porting it from Grime Z80 very quick because I didn't need to try and convert that palette to the systems. So what system are we looking at today? Well, we're looking at the BBC. Now, the BBC has an eight color palette, so we don't necessarily have the level of detail that we want. This is our sort of imaginary ideal palette here. We can't do that. So all we can do is the colors you can see here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a lookup table, which is a three dimensional table of three times three times three. So we've got blue and then we've got red and then the third axis is the green here. And of course, when we've got red, green and blue all set to the maximum value, we get white. Now we're going to have to convert those in some way. And so we're using a lookup table and these are the effective colors we're going to show on the BBC for our one nibble per channel definitions that we pass into it. So that's how we're going to deal with things for the BBC with its relatively limited color options. So let's actually see what we're going to actually be running today. So we've seen this example code before. We've got our Chibiko character here, and the um, wings are white and the face. We've got the hair, which is purple, and the clothing and the shoes are cyan here. And this is our general format. Now, in an ideal system, we would indeed have the cyan here. That's pretty much typical. But the um, magenta hair would normally be purple. But this system can't do purple. But magenta is a close enough approximate within the colors that it can do. How do we set this palette? Well, as I say, we're using a common definition for all of our palette based systems. If I just go to the bottom here, you can see here it is. We're actually defining 16 colors, but we, we aren't using them all here. So we're only going to be using the four colors here. So we've got our back background, which is black. And then we've got our purple here, which is just sort of a half value for red and blue and no green. And then we've got our cyan here, which is using green and blue. And we've got our white here. So we're defining these one nibble per channel and that is effectively one letter or number here in these columns and the top column does nothing. Now if we look for our palette definition within our code we'll see how we're actually using it. So we're loading in the values into the zero page entries H and L here and then we are calling this set palette command with the accumulator set to a palette entry number. Now this of course is passed on from our Z80 tutorials which were the original basis for my tutorials. So we're mimicking the functionality here and that's why we've got these zero page entries Z, H and ZL to mimic the Z80 registers H and L. Now when it comes to the BBC, as I've said, we can't have a varied palette. We've only got these sort of fixed options and so we're looking at using a lookup table to convert our blue, green and red values using these entries here. Now these are the color numbers, so 00, zero is white and it's going to be much easier to see these here. So 07 is black, 00 is white, 02 is magenta, and so on and so forth. So when we execute this function, we will have the accumulator set to a palette entry number. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if we've got a valid number, because some of our systems will want 16 colors, but this one can only take four. So we're going to check if we've got a value less than three, a valid value, and we'll continue if we have. If we've got a value four or higher, then we've got an invalid value. So we're just going to jump to this abort routine, which just returns from the function. Now, we're going to back up the palette number because we want to first work out what color we're going to select. So we're going to do that in this routine here. We've got these two palette conversion routines. Our L value has got red and blue in it. Our H value has got the green in it. So we're going to load in L and we're going to run this palette convert routine. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the top nibble and it's going to convert it to zero, one or two. And the reason for that is, of course, we only have three entries in each direction here. So 
that's what we're doing here. We're using these comparisons to convert that top nibble depending on whether it meets certain boundary criteria. And then when we return, we've now got that converted to a zero, a one or a two here. We then do the same for the blue value, the bottom nibble of the byte here. So we're running to this alternate version just here and we are swapping the nibbles because that's what we want to do here. And that means we can use this same conversion routine because we've swapped those nibbles over. And that's converting again to zero, one or two, this time the blue value. We're storing that again for later. We're overwriting L now because we've used it. And then we're doing the same for H, converting it. And this is the green value just here. So now we've got our R, G and B converted to a zero, a one or a two. Now what we do need to do is we need to multiply those values depending on the entry within our lookup table. Now, if you remember, green is going down here. So we are needing to multiply by nine each time because there's nine entries in each of these tables. Blue goes across, so we just need to add blue. And red is going down a line, which of course there's three entries per line. So what we need to do is we need to multiply the green by nine, multiply the red by three, and then just add the blue. So we're doing that here. And what we're doing here is we've currently got the um, green value in H here. And so we're effectively multiplying it by two here by rotating to the left. So we're doubling it. So we've now got green times two, doubling it again, green times four, doubling it again, green times eight. We add the green value once again because the original green value is in still in ZH. And now we've got the green times nine. We do pretty much the same. We're now adding ZB three times. This is adding three times the red value. And now we are OK there. And then finally, we just need to add the blue value, which is in ZL, as you can see, because we stored it just here. So we've now got our offset within our palette map. So all we need to do now is store that in the Y register, load in the source of our palette map, which is, of course, just here, and then use Y as an offset to read in the BBC color just here. We've now got the correct color that we're going to actually set the palette entry to. What do we do next? Well, we're going to store that in ZB because we need to do some more work for the rather weird way the BBC does its palettes. Now, if you don't remember, the way that the BBC's colors work is there is a ULA config that we have to pass to the graphics hardware. If you don't remember, please see my BBC bitmap tutorial where we covered all of this. We're going to have a very quick look at it in a moment, though. So we need to set this ULA config, and then we need to send that to the graphics hardware a little bit later. Well, here's the ULA config. We originally passed this over during our screen init routine, but this time we're going to modify it and then we're going to send it again to update the colors. Now, it's effectively a mapping for various bit combinations on the screen and what color they will end up looking like on the screen. And rather strangely, there are four different combinations for each color. So we're going to have to set each one of, one of these four, depending on if we're setting color zero, color one, color two, or color three. And you can see just as a quick lookup table of the colors here. But as I say, we don't need to worry about that when we're using this code. So what are we going to do? Well, what we need to do is multiply the palette entry we want by four, because as I said, there's four entries depending on the color. So we just do that here with two rotates to the left and we store that in Y again. So now we then load in the source of that ULA config that we just saw. And then we're going to set X to five. We're going to copy four bytes. We're going to read in the current byte and then replace the color part with our new color. If you remember, our color is stored in ZB here. So what we do is we load in A from ZHL offset by Y, which is, of course, our entry within the color because of that transfer just there. We then need to keep the top nibble. The top nibble is effectively the byte data within the bitmap, and the bottom nibble is the effective color that it's going to result in. So what we're doing is we're keeping the top nibble, and then we're oring in our replacement bottom nibble and storing the result back into that table ULA config here. And we do this four times. We're increasing Y to move to the next entry, decreasing X to decrease our counter. When our counter gets to zero, we've done all four. The last thing we need to do is run the send ULA config command again, which is just here. And all this does is it passes the data to the hardware so that we are resetting the color information. And that has the effect of immediately setting the color to the one that we wanted. And that's really all there is to it. Now, I think you'll find this is quite an effective way of setting colors on the BBC. I mean, it's not as efficient as if we had a 
hardware palette. You know, we, if we just define the palette straight in here, we could save a little bit of code, of course. But yeah, we've got this rather confusing palette that really isn't going to match any of our other systems. So if you want to do multi-platform programming, I think you're going to find that this is going to make things a lot easy, easier for you. Because I mean, in my programming these days, I'm working on you know 20 systems in an average month. I can't remember all of the complexities of each individual one. So this is a good way of simplifying things down and allowing me to quickly set my colors in a common way on all of these systems. So that's how we can set the palettes nice and easily on the BBC. We're going to be looking at the same next week. We're going to be looking at the Atari 800 and 5200. And they work in a very similar way. They've got a limited palette, so we're going to use a lookup table again. Anyway, thanks for watching today. We've got more BBC content coming up in the future, so please subscribe to see that. Thanks for watching and goodbye.